We've got our pots thrown, and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to learn how to make a foot on the bottom of something. Okay? That's really imperative that we learn how to do this because everything that we do has a foot. It basically, if you think of it, these were the two styles of, of coffee mugs that we were making earlier. They're very big right now. They're going to shrink 12%, and that doesn't, you don't know what that means, but these are going to be about the right size for, for coffee mugs. Notice that we have the different kinds of styles of lip. We have the easy one, which is just a flare over, and then we have the one where we came down smaller, put a little band there, came up above it, flipped it over our finger, and developed that. So we've got the lip portion, we've got the body portion here, body portion here, we need to trim a foot on them. So when we trim our clay, we want to use it at what we call the leather hard stage. Now, we can't distort it, I could if I pushed real hard, but we can still kind of push in or dig into it a little bit, okay? We can see what that looks like, okay? So we're gonna, we're gonna go ahead and start with our first one right here. We're gonna start with the easy one. And I'm gonna come in here, and I've got my Griffin grip set up, and all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold the bottom, and I'm gonna keep working it until it comes in and starts touching the pot evenly, and check to make sure that it catches it even, give it a little twist like that. There we go. It's all centered, ready to go, ready to trim right there. Neat part of it. Now I use, generally use mostly this tool right here, paracor tool, or this one if I have smaller areas. But generally I do this. And now I set up what we call a triangle. It's called a triangle to hold things. So what happens is when I do this, I grab this with my left hand or my right hand, take my left hand, my left thumb, and I'm going to push against this. I'm doing an isometric exercise, basically. I'm pushing one mus muscle against another. So we're going to come in here. I'm going to tighten into my torso. Remember, when we're working on the wheel, we always want to be in position, in tight here. We've got a lot more control when we do that. So we're going to come in here. We've got this triangle developed in our upper body because i got muscles pushing in this way and pushing against each other. That makes it much easier than trying to control this tool right here. Now, if that doesn't work for you, try something else, and if that works, then that's the right thing to do. But I'm just showing you kind of the basics of how, how it works and what will make it more successful for you. So I push against this, push against here, holding here, and what we're going to do is we're just going to start peeling away a little bit of clay at a time. Just like that, holding nice and steady, and we're going to let the pot tell us where the foot is going to be. That's real important. When I say that, what I mean is we're going to start a curve, and we're going to always be looking on a horizon, something going away from us. So we're going to start down here, and we're going to make a nice curve that comes up here, and that tells us where our foot's going to be. What we've done is we use this section of our tool right here, the flat section, and all we're doing is carving that kind of thing, just a nice little, what we're doing is just rolling our wrist around here. The next one is we want to make a foot section or like a little pedestal underneath our pot. So we're going to use this, this curve right here. Works perfect. This one right here, the one on your right hand side. We're going to come in here and we're going to come in and start digging away. Remember to not dig too far or you might cut a hole in your pot. But that gives us a good idea of where that foot is going to be, where that little pedestal is going to work for us. I like to kind of smooth it away so you don't really even see it. I like real subtle kinds of ideas and curves on my pots from an aesthetic standpoint. So there we go. We've got this. Now you could probably leave it here, but the interesting thing about pottery is that if you've noticed some of them, they end up with a little bottom section or a ringlet that kind of looks like this. The reason for this is we have this ringlet. If we were to have leave this clay in here full, which is full across here, if this happens to warp, it won't sit down good on top of a tabletop. It'll wobble around. So what we do is we cut out this outside, and we have a ringlet, and it will conform to the flatness of the shelf, even if the pot's warped a little bit, so that your pot will always sit nice and sturdy on there. That's really the reason that we do that. And there's another reason, so that when it's in the dishwasher, when we pull it out, our cup, there's always water in here, and it spills all over you. That's one of the other reasons, I think. Um, but so we need to put that ringlet in. And the way we're going to do that, we're going to use the same tool. We've used this part to do this section. We've done this to get to define the outside of the ringlet. And we're just going to 
take that tool and we're going to flip it just like this. We're just going to roll it right over and we're going to come in here like this. We're still going to use our isometrics. We're going to be pushing one muscle against another. I'm going to tap this to see that I have enough clay in there. If I hear a real light, high pitch, I don't have very much clay. If I hear more of a thud, I know I've got, got some girth in there. I can, I can kind of dig down deeper. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to hold real steady. You find if you try to do this, you're wobbly. If we come in here, we've got a lot more control of this thing. So we're going to come in here, we're going to dig in, and then we're just going to come all the way towards the center and get rid of that clay. Notice I'm throwing it on the ground right now. We will recycle it later. Because there we go. So we've got that, that ringlet cut in there. Now we're just going to come in here and I just lightly compress that and smooth down that clay a little bit. And there we go. We've got our ringlet. It's got a kind of a nice little design. If you don't like that, you can erase it by just, you know, doing that and smoothing it back out more if you want to. I kind of always like them a little bit. Notice how the, the insides of my bowls always have that little ringlet on the inside of them also. So there we go. Now we've got this down and we can look at it. We can take it off here and we can feel the thick and thinness throughout the whole thing. We find that it's fairly even all the way down. Now I've got it trimmed down here. It's about the same thickness as it is here down into here. I can kind of just feel that. And I've got everything aesthetically. It looks nice. And there we go. So that one's done. Now normally what I will do after I throw a pot and trim it, I want to grab a bag and we have lots of plastic bags around the place. Because I'm going to have to add a handle but I'm not quite ready to put one on yet. So it's a good idea and usually we throw two or three pots at a time. So let's go ahead and cover those up, get them in the plastic so that they don't dry out anymore. We want to keep them as close to leather hard as we can for when we're going to apply a handle. I'm going to do the same process here. I'll just do one real quick for you. I'm going to get it on here. Get it to, so it's on. I'll do it real quickly. We're going to do this section. Come in here. And if I want to smooth that side down even more, or maybe take a little more clay off of it, I'm going to look on that horizon and see what's happening. And I'm really not looking at what my wheel is or what my tool is doing. I'm really pretty much looking at what's happening on the horizon. There we go. Now we're going to use this section here. That's kind of set up where our ringlet's going to be. I'm going to smooth that out so you won't know that we've even got a transition there from body to foot. Burnish it with your finger depending on how wet it is. Come back and keep going back. If you don't like that, you can just keep changing it, alter it a little more. Now we're going to put our ringlet in. We're just going to take this like this. We're going to flip it like that. We're going to cut in there. And then we're just going to take out the rest of the clay in the bottom. We might have to do that a couple different times. Be real careful not to cut through the bottom of your pot. And that will happen to you occasionally. But we're all going to learn to have patience. We're going to be like every good doctor. Have patience. And we're going to come in here, burnish this. We've got a good strong ringlet down there. We've got this 